in this lecture we will learn about statistical sampling so first I'll start with an introduction what uh, is statistical sampling all, all about and then uh, we'll learn about uh, over five types of sampling techniques we'll also learn a bit about the uses of this technique. so at the end of this lecture you will know about you know the different types of statistical samplings and then how we can use them in our research uh, topics all right in statistical research as you probably know there are various aspects or various steps involved you know you start with a problem statement then you do literature review then you come up with a hypothesis and then you know decide on your methodology you collect data through experimentations to through survey right and if you already have data that's also fine but what's important here is that you collect data and you also do sampling okay so this is what we are going to cover in this lecture and then we analyze data and then we make conclusion out of this analysis okay so sampling as uh, is suggest the name suggests is just taking a sample out of the entire population if this is the population the true population right this is the true population so well this is the population that is available to you right which is somewhat smaller than the true population okay and then out of this available population okay you sample it right so sample is basically uh, a small number of observations from the available population and you do all your calculations analysis on the sample data but make inference up for your population data okay and why do we do it we will uh, see in the next slide well there are many things that's involved right whether it's money or time or workload we always want to optimize on those things and therefore what we do is that uh, we try to go for sample data rather than the entire population data oftentimes it's very difficult to collect data for the entire population uh, it involves a lot of money and a lot of time uh, which is uh, which is difficult in many situations computational time and resources is also a challenge but nowadays it is uh, less of a challenge because we have achieved computational uh, resources available and what uh, matters in the sampling techniques are the sampling procedures the size of the sample the the participation of the you know the different uh, elements of the sample uh, especially in survey who are the people who are participating in the survey so these are certain things which actually are important when you are you know collecting data and sampling from the data sampling can be broadly divided into two types uh, probability uh, sampling also known as random sampling the other one is the non probability sampling so here you know it involves calculation of probability if you're familiar with probability is just you know calculation uh, okay calculation of uh, chances okay and uh, whereas in non probability sampling we do not compute the probability uh, um, also in other words we can say that in probability sampling each and every element um, has some chances of being selected in the sample so let's say this is a population and we are you know uh, collecting or we are sampling a small sample so this is the population this is the sample in probability sample sampling each element in the population has some probability of being selected in this sampling but that criteria is not necessarily true in non probability sampling and that's the difference and we'll see some of this you know the types uh, in the next few slides so what's the sampling process in a research uh, environment what are the things that you do to sample data from population so first thing to do is to define the population of concern so what is your population and what is the you know available data that we have for populations you may not have you know availability of the true population for example let's say you want to do the consumption pattern of the, of of the world so you cannot go to each household and get consumption data right so you have to define the the population that you have access to and it need not be the you know entire population or true population and from there 
to specify the sampling frame. So what is sampling frame? It is set of items or events so uh, possible to measure. Okay, not uh, all items um, are uh, you know easy to measure. So that thing has to be you know specified. Um, for example, you know you know there is a population in place, and we want to you know sample uh, from that population. Like not all of these elements in this population are accessible. So you uh, sampling frame is about identifying those elements which can be or the elements or the items or the events which can be measured you know so you identify that in the second step and then you specify a sampling method for selecting these items okay so those items which are indeed accessible and you meet the meet your craft then it's about specifying which sampling method to be used to select the items from the population into the sample and then you know determining the sample size well it happens you know uh, exactly the same time as you, you decide upon the sampling method that is to be used then you implement the method and then you collect data you review the sampling process to ensure that it is it is error free so these are the steps that you follow in the sampling process all right so what is the probability sampling so probability sampling as i've already said is is one type of sampling where every unit in the population has a chance so this is important every unit in the population has some chance of getting selected in the sample and when uh, each of these uh, units has an equal probability of being selected then it's called equal probability uh, of select or eps sampling sampling on the other hand is where you cannot really compute the probability of selection accurately okay and we'll see some of the examples also from the non probability sampling simple random sampling is uh, is a probability sampling and this is also a typical case where each and every observation or every element in the population has equal probability of being selected in the sample and that's why it's called simple random sampling um, and it's used mostly when the population is small and homogeneous because it's computationally very ex uh, you know, expensive. So if, if the population is small and homogeneous, we go for simple random sampling. Um, and all elements uh, are given equal probability. I've already said that. For the non-homogeneous population, it's not suitable. That means if you have different segments, then it's better to go for other type of sampling. And we'll we'll talk about uh, you know what type sampling is uh, suitable when you have different uh, segments we use stratified sampling there okay and you know we'll see what stratified sampling is all about uh, but the problem with this type of sampling is that each segment is not well represented okay if you have many segments in the population and you go for simple random sampling you will find that some of the segments are not uh, well represented in the sample and that could be uh, you know biasing your uh, data uh, the analysis uh, and your results systematic sampling so it involves a random stat and then you proceed with uh, a selection for every kth element okay i'll straight away go to the picture and it's easy to understand from there okay so these are you know different elements of a given population so the first element that we select in the sample is random. It could be the first one, it could be the second one, third one, fourth one, but you know it's totally random. So we selected the third one, but remember this is the random selection. It could be any other uh, you know element also. And then you select every uh, third, sorry, every yeah third element from there, right? Every third element from there. Okay, so k here is a three, but k could also take could be fourth or could be two, five. Okay, so it can take any number. Okay, so the randomness is about selecting the first element, and after that it's pretty deterministic. Okay, and it's evenly spread. That's one uh, good thing. Stratified sampling. Um, so each stratum or each segment is then sampled as an independent subpopulation. Okay. So basically, you segment the population and then use simple random sampling. That's 
stratified random sampling. So stratified random sampling is nothing but uh, you know segmentation, uh, segmentation plus your uh, simple random sampling. Then that's called stratified random sampling. Okay, and the good thing here is that all the segments are well represented in stratified sampling. Okay, so you have uh, you know proportionate representation in the sample. Okay, if you have let's say male and female, so what you do is that you you know segment them into male and female population, and then you use simple random sampling for male population and simple random sampling for female population, and then you combine so that both male and female are well represented otherwise if your population has a bias let's say towards male your sample will have the same bias there so it's not going to be you know uh, well representing uh, in the in the sample study of the study study by sampling here you see right we have men and women and we want to select three women and three men from uh, you know out of this four uh, uh, elements in the population and how what we do is that we simply segment into different two different segments and then we select three out of those four and it could be any three okay so the, the selection of these three are totally random it's just that uh, before we when we select we uh, ourselves segment into two different uh, you know different segments but in modern software you don't have to do it if you mention what the segmentation what the classification is it's automatically going to do it for you. Cluster sampling. Okay, it's a two state sampling. And what you do is that, um, uh, so you basically, you know, select uh, different uh, sample areas, homogeneous sample areas. So here is, here you have population and you have homogeneous uh, uh, samples. Okay, basically these are clusters. Okay, these are clusters. So the elements in each cluster are homogeneous with each other and heterogeneous with other clusters. And then you select a few of these clusters randomly. Okay. So you cluster them and then you use simple random sampling. Uh, so here the units are not individuals but uh, the clusters. Okay. That's a difference. However, you might be wondering. How is it different from stratified sampling? Because we also do the same thing, right? We segment, uh, you know, population into different homogeneous group, and then we use sample random sampling. How is it different? Well, it's different actually. In strat stratified sampling, um, you know, um, each and every observation or element is well represented or is uh, is represented in the sample. However, in uh, cluster sampling, we get only a subset of the clusters. Okay, so let's say we have a big population, and we have let's say about 20 such clusters. Okay, in the populations, and we you know sample 10 out of that. That means the other 10 clusters are not even present in your final sample. Okay, but well, that's not good. That means some of these segments are not going to be present uh, in the in the final sample. Whereas in stratified sampling, all segments will be present, well, some pre uh, presence in the final sample. So that's the difference. Then quota sampling. So it's quota sampling is uh, a non-probability sampling. So you cannot, you know, properly calculate the probability and so on. Um, so what you do is that you, the population is first segmented into different uh, mutually uh, exclusive subgroups, whether it could be male and female, whether it Based on demography, based on you know, so mutually exclusive. You, you understand what it means, right? It means that there is no overlap between these two populations, subgroups. Okay, example could be you know, um, in a in a survey, you you go for two hundred females and three hundred males between certain age group. Okay, that means you have already uh, taken a decision to exclude certain number of observations right? right so they are not they cannot be in the final sample therefore you are excluding a priori before even you start sampling you are excluding certain number of observations and it, it is uh, important in some cases where you know some uh, segments are underrepresented or likely to be underrepresented for example you know you are this you are doing a survey for consumption of a particular good and you see that 
your your population has 80% male and 20% uh, female okay and uh, you think that you no know, that's going to be a problem you really want to uh, have a balanced uh, representation in the final sample and therefore what you do is that you decide yourself how many females and how many males i'm going to so i'm i'm going to um, get data from you can also use other filtering criteria so that's when you, you decide to you know uh, to make it more uh, you know expert driven rather than you know a probability or, or driven so it's called non random sampling or non probability sampling convenience sampling also known as uh, opportunity sampling accidental sampling hazard sampling so you basically go for the uh, set of elements in the populations which are readily available or convenient okay and by the way this is not a good sampling technique you cannot draw inference uh, based on uh, a convenience sampling for the entire population because your uh, sampling is pretty biased let's say you do not have resources to go to you know rural areas for a survey and you you know you simply reached out to people in the urban area and then you do your study that means it's best on your convenience you are you are in city you are, you simply uh, went ahead with uh, people from the city and he could not go to rural areas for the data collection and that's called convenience sampling because you really preferred or you chose convenience over you know a proper sampling uh, technique so sometimes it's uh, okay but uh, often time it should be avoidable should be avoided panel sampling so this is when you you know you select a, a, a group of participant and you do random sampling you you could do simple random sampling uh, for instance but you continue to do that for uh, several time periods okay and it can be done for both for probability sampling and non probability sampling the only uh, spe uh, specific feature of this sampling technique is that you do it for different time period for t1 for t2 t3 and t4 it could be you know year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 month 1 or quarter or something like that it's uh, used for uh, in marketing like you want to see the growth of consumption for a particular group of uh, people you can also see how the opinion of people is changing over time right so that also can be used so it's basically used in panel data analysis panel data analysis uh, as you probably know that requires you to have both cross section as well as time series data it combines both cross section and time series and that's where you can use uh, panel sampling you know to get a data which can be used in panel data analysis thanks